A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses on Mount Sinai, Seven weeks of years shall you count, seven times seven years, so that the seven cycles amount to forty-nine years. Then, on the tenth day of the seventh month, let the trumpets sound, and on this day of atonement, the trumpet blasts shall re-echo throughout the land. This fiftieth year you shall make sacred by proclaiming liberty in the land for all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you when every one of you shall return to his own, his own property, where every one to his own family estate. In this fiftieth year, your year of jubilee, you shall not sow, nor shall you reap the aftergrowth, or pick the grapes from the untrimmed vines. Since this is the jubilee, which shall be sacred for you, you may not eat of all this produce, except as taken directly from the field. In this year of jubilee, then, every one of you shall return in his own, to his own property. Therefore, when you shall sell the land to your neighbor, or buy any from him, do not deal unfairly. On the basis of the number of years since the last jubilee, shall you purchase the land from your neighbor. And so also, on the basis of the number of years for crops, shall, you sell, shall he sell to you. When the years are many, the price shall be so much more. When the years are few, the price shall be so much less. For it is really the number of crops that he shall sell you. Do not deal unfairly then, but stand in the fear of your God. I, the Lord, am your God. The word of the Lord. <laughs> the Lord be with you. <laughs> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Herod the Tetrarch heard of the reputation of Jesus and said to his servants, This man is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead. That is why mighty powers are at work at him, in him. Now Herod had arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip. For John had said to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. Although he wanted to kill him, he feared the people, for they regarded him as a prophet. But at a birthday celebration for Herod, the daughter of Herodias performed a dance before the guests and delighted Herod so much that he swore to give her whatever she might ask for. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was distressed, but because of his oaths and the guests who were present, he ordered that it be given and had John beheaded in the prison. His head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl who took it to her mother. His disciples came and took away the corpse and buried him, and they went and told Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Both of our readings present us with some difficulties either to understand or even, in the case of the gospel, to hear, to listen to. I'm going to make a little comment on each one of these readings to help us to um, understand them a little better, and then I'm going to try to say a little something to put them together as to what might be a lesson for us here and now today. So pray that I can do that briefly. Uh, 
in the first reading, what struck me is that the one whom Jesus called the greatest of all of the prophets, the summation of the entirety of God's revelation to his people in the Old Testament is cruelly put to death as entertainment for the guests at a birthday party. One might say they really knew how to throw a party in those days. But, you know, it is rather that's not exactly the way that you would expect the, the um, uh, most eminent man of God of his day to meet his end. And yet the cruel indignity of that end being basically martyred as entertainment and also martyred as a result of jealous rage that 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 is the way of the world that is precisely what John was preaching against that is precisely what Jesus not only preached against but by his death and resurrection triumphed over that self-centered uh, ordering of everything according to one's own way of wanting things that is the way of the world. Now let's go back to this reading in the Old Testament, uh, which is part of the law that, according to the book of Leviticus, God gave to Moses on Mount Sinai and expected his people to follow. It was very difficult to understand. Uh, I'd like to commend Sister Enda for the wonderful job that she did in reading it, because that's a very difficult passage to read, wasn't it? and even more difficult, perhaps, to make some kind of sense of. The idea of all of those numbers and seven weeks and uh, 70 weeks of weeks and et cetera, et cetera, what, the thing that all of that meant was that God, in making his covenant with his people, wanted to establish a reset button, a time every 50 years after 49 years to push a reset button to restore things to the way that they should be because well as we go on doing our thing things tend to get corrupted we tend to want to take shortcuts we tend to want to take advantage of one another we tend to put ourselves in over and above the other person in our daily dealings, you know, if if I can if I can win at bingo and so and so loses, that makes me feel a little bit better. You know, that kind, all that kind of thing happens. That's very human. What God wanted to do is to establish a very public year of let's bring everything back to the way it was in the beginning and start from there, knowing that we will then tend to keep corrupting things. But what that reset button does is kind of keep things from getting too much out of hand. So, what's interesting also is this was declared very strongly in the Bible, at least in the book of Leviticus, declared very strongly as an obligation we have almost no record, historically, that this was ever followed. And that's one of the problems, too. You know, God said a lot of things, and we have conveniently picked and chosen just exactly what we want to follow, and the things that maybe stand in the way of our self-interest, or stand in the way of the way we think things want to be, or whatever, we sometimes choose either to explain them away, oh, Jesus didn't really mean that, or we tend simply to ignore them and pretend like they don't exist. So, what we have is an opportunity given by God in the Old Testament to try, humanly speaking, to set things right and we ignored it. And then we have, in the launching 
platform of Jesus himself, we have the culmination of perverse human interests doing away with John the Baptist. But that tragedy made room for Jesus to step forward. And maybe the lesson for us is that God continues to use in our own lives, God continues to use the, the elements of our lives that we don't much like, that we tend to be uh, wanting to run away from or at least ignore, um, and tends to use them as points where he can reveal himself. I think that is one of the real beauties of the Sacrament of Reconciliation, confession. A periodic opportunity for us to come to terms with those parts of our lives that we would prefer to ignore, that we would like to run away from. You know, some people will sometimes say to me, well, Father, I'd go to confession, but I don't know what my sins are. I don't know what to confess. And my temptation is always to say, well, you know, ask your best friend, they'll tell you, uh, if they're honest with you. You want to know what your sins are? You know, husbands, ask your wives. Wives, ask your husbands. And, uh, and you'll find out what your sins are and what you can say in confession. At any rate, uh, in, a, in a sense, in the sacrament of reconciliation, confession, God gives us a little something of a reset button to allow us to recover our original grace and see if maybe we can be more cooperative with grace. The result of confession, and this will be the last thing I'm going to say, the result of confession of the sacrament should not be trying to do better. The result of confession should be, Lord, help me to let you into my life little more so that your grace will transform me. So the only way I can do better is if I let the Lord in his grace transform me. So that may be a little reflection to take off with us into the day and into the rest of our lives.